Terry Silver. That's a villain. Like, that's a villain. So look, basically, people, they've been saying Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai. So I finally finished Cobra Kai. I finally finished Cobra Kai. And you know what? The key thing is to be honest. So I'm going to talk to you about the good things about this Cobra Kai season and the bad things. So let me, you know what? You know what they say? Start with the bad things. You know what? I'll start with the good and then with the bad. I'll start, I'll start with the good and then with the bad. I think it's Ian Michael Griffith. I think that's his name. Terry Silver. That's a villain. Like, that's a villain. Um, because see, I remember I'm a little older than you guys. Because I was like, wait, did I watch Karate Kid Papa 3? Then I looked at the trailer and I looked at the scenes. I remember watching that thing. When I, this is when I was living in, in, in Nigeria. I remember Karate Kid Part 3. Cause just when because you know how just scenes just jog a memory, like I can remember where I was sitting, I can remember what it looked like, I remember what the room was like, and we weren't watching it on VHS. This was on bloody VHS. I remember just that it's just such a distinct memory because it's been a long really time because I watched it when I was literally like a child. <laughs> when I was like so super young. So um I mean yeah, for me that's for me that's I think that is the highlight of the entire show. From, it was the best piece of the entire show. Now, Martin Cove, who plays Chris. I know, again, guys, if you know your movies, he was also one of the villains in Rambo 2. He was one of the villains in Rambo First Blood Part 2. So if, if you know your, your your movies there. So, um, no, he, he, he's always amazing. He's always amazing. Like, he just has an amazing 80s smile. But you can just see what the 80s man, man mentality is, man. And just how he was such a villain to those guys and the things that he did. And what he did at the very end, I'm like, bro. This, like, you thought Chris was bad. He's worse. You know, it's, it's sort of similar to, like, in, in, in The Wire, when um you had Avon and Baxel, who you thought was bad. Then Marlo now comes into the form, like, bro, you thought Avon was bad. Marlo is even worse. So I just thought, like, just... The act, his acting was on point. His character was, was on point. I think the writing of his character was on point. The character act was on point. How he was reintroduced. And the things that he did and how he kept on... Basically, because he's like Cobra Kai, but to the next level, where he just pushes these guys over the top. So I thought... He was freaking amazing. And I thought how what he did to Chris at the end, I was like, bro, this is this guy, this this, this guy is crazy, man. But it, 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 it was good, man. I don't, I, the overall writing is good. See, for me, I am more with the older crew than the kids. Now the kids are not all bad, but I'm more for the older guys. Because for me, I still can't believe that they are doing this and how well they've done this. Because I remember watching the first episode, I was like, wait a minute. Is this? Because I didn't know it was Karate Kid. When I watched the very first episode of season one, I didn't know it was Karate Kid. So I said, like, is this? So I think the guys, the older guys and the, how you just, how their story is progressing, that's cool. That's cool. And you know, and what I like is about sons, father and sons and how different fathers treat different sons and so forth. So I just thought that whole dynamic of, um, um, what, um what, what's it called? Lawrence's kid and Lawrence with me, Gail. Um, what, what was it called? Daniel with Sam, Daniel with Miguel as, as well. And just how that keeps on um, switching. I just think that's quality. Now, look, I have to be real. I found it hard getting through this season. I see, like, you know, it's it's it's, it's, it's why I didn't even want to rush to do this because I don't want to be like the sore thumb out there. But I'll be honest, man. So it is what it is. And for me, this is just me. So look, if you enjoyed, you you enjoyed. I don't want to take any enjoyment away from you. So I'm just giving my honest view. When I see girls fighting, it just doesn't do it for me, bro. Like I, like the cheesy is good. Like cheesy is good. This kind of cheesiness was too much. Like for me, I like cheesiness if done well. Eighties cheesiness is great. I love it. But the way it was cheesiness, it was it, there was just a bit where it was just too cringy. But like I mean, guys. Like, the fight's choreography is good. But, I mean, now, does this make me a bad guy? Does this make me sexist? I don't know. I, I'm only being honest. When I just see these girls fighting, I'm like, uh, like, it just, I'm like, it's, these are those girls fighting. Because the way that they throw the punches, the way that they throw the kicks, their movements and so forth, it's, it is so lackluster when you now compare it to when the boys are fighting. Like, when Mimi Girl fights, uh, wait, is it Jason? What's the name of the, of the other dude? When he fights him. So, yeah, man, I, I, yeah, I was, I wasn't feeling that. Another thing that I think 
for a lot of the guys, I they were really endearing in the first few seasons, but now they have some endearing moments. And some of the moments are just like, okay, we've just seen this again and again and again. Yeah, it's all cool. But we've seen this again and again and again, man. So for me, you see, I am pre there are bits that I really like, but overall, it's just not my thing. Overall. But it's like you have Terry Silver, who no, that's like all the scenes with Terry Silver were, were amazing. Like every every scene he was in was amazing. So for me, Terry Silver was what pretty much got me hooked and through this whole thing. And I still sort of like the dynamic between Daniel and Lawrence and so forth. I, I still think that's still cool. That's still cool with what they're happening in the domestic in their domestic lives, man. But I think overall, man, it's just not my thing. You know, but tell me what, what, what you guys what you guys think and how you thought about it. But look, the way it's ended, I think, is amazing. Because what I believe now, obviously, you're now seeing that Dan is now bringing in that guy that he fought in Karate Kid Part 2. And what I think is Terry Silver's not going to call the, the guy that fought Daniel in Karate Kid Part 3. Because he's still around, so they're going to probably bring him in. So my thing is that, are they going to bring in Hilary Swank, who was in Karate Kid Part 4? And what will they bring in? So yeah, so my thoughts...